guys, welcome back to Ashar Books. And today I am here to talk about things that I hate in books. Now I know that hate is a strong word. So maybe it's more like I just really dislike these things in books, but I had fun making this list and I always find these videos really entertaining to watch um, because it's nice to kind of complain about the things that annoy you, right? Um, so also just to preface it, um, if you love any of these things that I'm gonna mention, that's totally fine. Books are very subjective. Our opinions are our opinions and you are absolutely allowed to have your opinion just like I'm allowed to have mine. So without further ado, the first thing that I really do not like in books is long chapters. And this is the one that kind of made me think about doing this video, to be honest, because I was reading a book not too long ago and it had the longest chapters. I just, whenever there's that long of a chapter, I don't know, it just makes the book drag on for me. I'm very much so a fan of a short chapter, like a short chapter, I like that, especially when you're bouncing between different viewpoints, you know, two characters or more than two characters, I really like it to be, I mean, I'm not talking like a page, but you know, I like short chapters, it just moves it along, it makes it more fast paced, and it's my preference. I'm just not the biggest fan of long chapters, I don't know. So if you hear something crunching, my cat is eating her food right there, so I can't really ask her to stop, so just ignore. Number two is too many flashbacks. So I, in general, am a little picky with books that flash back and forth between different time periods. Um, I feel like this is happening a lot recently, especially if you're doing any kind of a like friends to lovers situation. And I do understand why it's needed in those situations because obviously you wanna see, or a second chance romance, you kinda wanna see what happened previously um, as well as like present. But I just, I don't know, it's, it, I find when it has like a present timeline and a past timeline that like a good chunk of the time, I don't, I pick one and then I pick one timeline that I prefer and like a lot of the time it's the present timeline and I'm just so bored with the stuff that's in the past. Now, having said that, this like pretty much everything on this list, I have seen done super well and in some of my favorite books. So I'm not saying it's impossible to do um, like well, but a lot of times I just wanna be out of that timeline and back in the present where like the action's happening, especially in like a fantasy type book or in the romance, I wanna be back in like the current relationship. So yeah, just not the biggest fan of too many trips to the past. Okay, the next one is authors being too repetitive or like repeating information too much. So this one, it made me think of it because it happens in some of my favorite books too, I'm not gonna lie. So like, again, doesn't mean just because I hate this thing that I hated the book that it was in all the time, but one that I can think of for this is so the From Blood Nash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. It's one of my favorite series. I love that series. You will not talk me out of it. But I did have a few issues with, I think it was book, was it three? Or it was two or three, which I liked in general. I loved the storyline. I think it was three, because two I loved. So it just felt like we kept getting regurgitated the same information that we already knew and it was really annoying. Um, and I feel like, I don't know if it was just me noticing that, but it's just, I felt like we already knew it and it was just being said in like a different way. Now I understand when things need to be repeated to an extent, especially in a series where you might have a reader just pick up book two or three and you're trying to kind of like summarize things so that they can sort of make sense of the plot. I get that, especially if it's a few years between books coming out, like I want that. But I just feel like a lot of times, and not just in that series I mentioned, but in a lot of other books I've read before, is really annoying when you as the reader find out information kind of along with the main character, but then they tell you, and this happens a lot in fantasy, I feel like more than anything, probably because the plot is a little bit more intricate, the world building's more intricate, um, but you know that information and then they proceed to tell like their friend about it, this person about whatever happened, this person about whatever happened. And by the end, I'm like, okay, we get it. Like that was a big thing, but like, let's not say it 14 times because as the reader, you already realize that. So that just gets on my nerves and I find myself skimming when that happens, which is not the best. So the fourth one might be controversial because I know a lot of people like this, but too many point of views. Now, 
Having said that, two point of views when it's the hero, the heroine, or two love interests, I guess I should say, I really like. I like two point of views if it's a romance. I like getting both sides of the romance story. What I don't like is when there's, and again, I feel like a lot of these are from fantasy books. I'm not sure why. Um, but when there's like three, four, five point of views. Now, again, I'm currently reading a book that's actually doing this really well <clears throat> and I'm really liking it. But a lot of times it's kind of one of those things again where I have one or two that I'm enjoying immensely and then the side characters are just they're not what I want to be reading and I get the purpose of them a lot of times it's to kind of bring in a separate storyline that's going to meet <clears throat> so I get that but a lot of times I just don't care about side characters and a book like I'm trying to think of one like Game of Thrones or something like that which no I did not ever finish I only read I don't even think I finished the first one because I just don't enjoy when there's that many different character point of views. Just a personal opinion. Okay, the fifth one that I really don't like is unlikable main characters. Um, usually the heroine, I feel like, is the one that starts off unlikable. The hero, I feel like, I mean, I can handle that more, especially if it's like, you know, a redeeming kind of situation where they're trying to give him a redemption story I can get behind that for some reason more but when the heroine specifically but really just whoever the main character is in that story is just painted so unlikable I just don't enjoy reading about it because I'm such a character driven reader I definitely am and if I can't empathize and I can't feel for that character and I can't want good things to happen for that character i find it really hard to get sucked into the book and you know want to keep reading so i know some people like the morally gray characters they're not my favorite thing um and again a few times i've read them it's done well usually it has some kind of a redemption or redeeming quality by the end but not my favorite okay number six is not enough dialogue and this is kind of a weird one, but basically, you know, when you look at a page and there's just like all description for like three pages and you can't see any like, you know, parentheses for dialogue. I, if that happens in a book, I'm always like, oh no, <laughs> because I just feel like I love dialogue. Like that's my favorite part. I love witty dialogue. I love like interesting language being used in the dialogue. And while I do like beautiful writing and beautiful prose and descriptions in its place, it's not what I'm typically reading for. That's just not the type of reader I am. I typically want the the character development right the characters together and usually that's with dialogue so yeah i just i don't know like some books if they get too wordy i just again kind of lose interest and start skimming um so yeah I, I like it when it's a pretty like dialogue heavy book so the next one i feel like everybody has on their list who's a reader because it, it's just really stinking annoying and that is cover changes particularly cover changes in the middle of a series. So if the series has finished, I can sort of get behind it. I still find it annoying, but I sort of get it. Um, but when you're in the middle of writing a series, especially if it's like a longer series, say more than three books, and you're you know buying the books as they come out, why, oh why, would the publisher be like, you know what we should do to these readers who've been like loyal readers? We should change the covers. like. I do not understand. I am not someone who's super picky with like the type of book they get. Like I can have paperbacks and I can have hardbacks in the same series. Like I know that cringes some people out. It doesn't really bother me, but it does bother me if those paperbacks and hardbacks have completely different covers with like completely different art styles. No. I will say, even though I said it doesn't bother me if the series is finished, sometimes it does because I will say I'm somebody who doesn't usually just drop all of my money or is able to drop all of my money on like buying a big series. So like I read Throne of Glass last year, um, finally, I know, and I really, really loved it. And I've been slowly picking up the books, but I didn't, I read a lot of them through Libby or like the library and things like that. So I didn't have them all. And I've been slowly buying them, but there's what, like seven books in that series. So I think I still need to buy like three. And now we have the new covers and I'm like, 
while I think the new covers are beautiful, I'm like, can we still get the old ones? Cause I really don't want to have half and half. So it does sometimes still annoy me, even though again, I get it if the series is finished, I should have probably read it earlier and we wouldn't have been having this problem. Okay, so number eight that annoys me is too much angst with no payoff. Now keep with me because I actually don't mind a level of angst in my romance. I know it's kind of a, you love it or hate it type of situation. Some people love an angsty, dramatic story and some don't, I don't mind it. However, and again, a book I recently read reminded me of why I really don't like this is that if you have had really angsty relationships, especially if it's been more than one book that the, like the relationship has been over and then you don't give me enough time with the couple being happy and joyful and you get to see that like I'm talking I if this that angsty I want like a few chapters with them together an epilogue maybe a second epilogue otherwise I just feel used like I just feel like we suffered through all of this pain and then I don't get what I really wanted now if I get all that angst and then we get enough like joy filled, wonderful romance at the end, then I love it. Those are some of my favorites. So just if you're gonna read or an angsty book, please add a chapter or two on the end so I can be fulfilled because otherwise I'm left feeling drained. <laughs> so the next one is predictable storylines. And what I mean by that is not necessarily like the whole like, oh, romance is predictable. No, I, I love my romance semi predictable. That's why I'm reading it. But uh, I mean like there are certain, I guess I'm thinking more tropes, which I'm not, I didn't put tropes I hate in this uh, list because I think I might do a separate video with like tropes I really don't like later on. But what I'm thinking of for this, as far as like predictable storylines is things that just every time that kind of like trope happens, the events are all the same. Now the one that like I literally am pretty much talking about here is brother's best friend. And what I mean by that is like, how many times do you read a brother's best friend romance? And I think the reason it is not one of my favorite tropes is that you always have the characters saying, oh my gosh, we can't let my brother know. We can't let my brother know. Like he's gonna explode. Like they sneak around, they keep it secret. They always keep it secret for way too long. And then what did you know? Who is shocked? Guess who finds out? Usually in like the worst possible way, like walking in on them or something like that. And he's shocked the brother has a horrible reaction things implode and i'm just like like i'm not even surprised like i don't mind that trope if it's done differently but i'd say like 90 percent of the books that exact thing i just said happens and it's always like the big third act you know explosion that may lead to a breakup that may not it might just be a drama but i just know like please if you're gonna write that, come up with a different way, like have them find out in the beginning and then, you know, maybe they have to have that as an external conflict throughout the book or whatever. I just, it, things like that when it's super predictable and you're like, you know exactly what's gonna happen, it's just not, not worth it for me. My last thing that annoys me is characters that are too perfect or boring. What I mean by that is like, I, yes, you want like the perfect guy, right? In a romance, that's like what you're looking for. But I don't feel like the perfect man is perfect. Like he has flaws. That's what part of makes him perfect. Like how does he, work through his flaws or overcome his flaws or put them aside for his love interest. Like um, when you have a character who's just too perfect, whether that's the heroine and she's just painted with like this golden halo above her head can do no wrong or the hero who is just too perfect, like he has nothing wrong. It's just not something I can like believe. And yes, I know that some things in romances aren't completely believable, especially if we're doing like fantasy or like, you know, like alien or something like that. No, it's not gonna happen in real life, but I just feel like to make it more plausible to something you would see, you want that person, those both of those love interests to have some flaws and that's why they're likable. Like they're likable because none of us are perfect. So it's nice to see that reflected in our characters. So it just kind of annoys me and honestly just makes the book kind of bland and boring when one or two of the characters in the story are just too perfect. 
list. All right, guys, so that was my list of 10 things that just I really hate in books or strongly dislike, at least, in books. So um, let me know what one of you two, two of your dislikes are. Um, are there any that you really like on this list that I said? Because I love to chat about it. Like I said, um, I think it's really fun that everyone has their own different opinion about this kind of thing. And it's just part of the fun of being a reader. So definitely let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.